Yes, yes. Everyone holds your applause. I know you missed me, but I had to go through a two-month training arc called college so I could achieve only what Sheen from Jimmy Neutron once could. But I'm back. I watched the first episode of a lot of anime coming out this spring, and I rated them for you guys based off the first episode, so I hope you enjoy and find some recommendations. So let's just jump right into it then. First up at the top of my watch list this spring is Spy Family. The story follows a spy named Twilight. He had to execute a mission that requires him to build a fake family, so he adopts a daughter and agrees to a fake marriage with a woman. However, the daughter's a telepath and the woman- Mother f I'm recording here! And the woman's an assassin. I'm gonna be transparent with you guys up front. I read up to volume 6 of the manga, and it goes way past the first episode, but the story is something new and original with characters that you like right from the start and only grow to love more as the story continues. I mean, look at Anya. She's freaking adorable. <laughs> The art and animation were also clean and well polished. If the show continues to adapt from the manga properly, then I see no reason why this isn't the anime of the season to watch. I give the show a straight 2.5 out of 2.5 for the story, refreshing take, characters, and animation for a perfect 10 out of 10. If you haven't watched the show, go watch it. If you've read the manga, go watch it. It's amazing, I love it, and I highly recommend it. And, I mean, if we're talking about great characters already, we can't just ignore the waifu of the season, Shikimori, from Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie. Michon Shikimori and Yu Uzumi are high school sweethearts. They hold hands walking home from school, they flirt in the halls, they tease each other, but Shikimori knows what she wants, and she knows how to get it. She can turn from a cutie to cool in an instant. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but 2022 is the year of the waifu. First, Kitagawa. Now, Shikimori. I mean, just look at her face. Just look at her form. She even has Ultra Instincts, guys. But that's the entire show. The main character is an absolute beta male that can't do anything and is insanely accident prone. She just takes care of him throughout the entire show. It seems like a typical slice of life. Every other character is super bland, like an unsalted saltine cracker. But I have to admit, the art and animation is very good. If you just don't look outside the main characters. I give the story and refreshing take a 1 out of 2.5, and the characters and animation a 1.5 out of 2.5, for a total of a 5 out of 10. The show seems very mid right now, but I'm going to give the show a few more episodes because, I mean, just <laughs> look at her face, guys. Ugh! Since we're on the topic of waifus, we might as well talk about Birdie Wing. It's a show about golf and waifus and waifus playing golf. That's about it. Golf prodigy E spends her days betting on golf to earn a living. One day she has a fateful encounter with Aoi Amawashi, the daughter of the owner of a large corporation and elite golf player. The two are both geniuses, but they live in completely different worlds. Honestly, I have no idea how this show is going to turn out. It really seems like it wants to be Haikyuu, but then it does things like this. The show just takes itself too seriously to be pulling off stunts that only I and Gigabrain Sheen can calculate and pull off. I didn't get to see anything story wise besides her betting and then going home to her complicated situation, but then it didn't explain the situation. And then she also didn't meet the girl in the synopsis till the very end of the episode and they both hit one golf ball each. But those greens are looking pretty nice. I give the story and characters a 1 and the refreshing take it 2 out of 2.5 and the animation a 1.5 out of 2.5 for a final score of a 5.5 out of 10. I don't see myself finishing this one, especially if it's trying to be as serious as it is. Now Eve could swing a golf club, but in this show, 
they swing swords. One day a gamer played video games until he fell asleep, and when he woke up he found himself in a new world as a skeleton. Facial recognition got a hit. Jesus Christ, that's an isekai. Yes, it's an isekai. And yes, it's as basic as any other isekai. But wait, there's more. It has CGI. But wait, there's more. It also may have some very dark scenes that's very similar to another anime you've probably heard of before. But outside of that scene, the rest of the show is really bland and predictable. I give the story a 1.5, and that's just because I'm an isekai junkie, but a refreshing take, I give it a 0. The skeleton character is kind of interesting, so a 1.5, and the animation looked good when it wasn't using CGI, but even when it did use CGI, the CGI parts weren't bad CGI. So at 1.5. So a total of a 4.5 out of 10. I'm watching this because I'm having isekai withdrawals, and that's about it. It's not because it's amazing or anything. And at this point in the video, you might be saying, oh my gosh, Weebs, are there going to be any good shows coming out? Well, don't you worry, my little dumplings, because up next is AOI, the soccer anime. I've sat here for like 10 minutes trying to pronounce this freaking kid's name, and I just give up, so. MC is a young aspiring soccer player from a backwater town in Japan. His hopes of getting into a high school at the Good Soccer Club are dashed when he causes an incident during a critical match for his team, which results in their loss and elimination from the tournament. But everything happens for a reason. In this show, it seems like the main character is as if Hinata and Kageyama's bromance actually produced a child. He is the mindset of Kageyama, the raw athleticism and I just want to score mentality of Hinata, and a skill set that falls somewhere in between the two. We didn't get to see much game time on the show, but it looks like it's a step below Haikyuu animation wise, and it seems like it's going to take the route of Haikyuu where MC climbs the ranks of players to become the best, and I see a lot of potential. I give the story, characters, and animation all a 2 out of 2.5, and that's because I see this as being the Haikyuu of soccer. But because of that same reason, it's not very refreshing, so a 1 out of 2.5, for a total of a 7 out of 10. Next up is Tomodachi Game. It depicts a group of high school students becoming involved in an extortionate debt repayment game in which they exploit psychological warfare and intellectual games to feed one another's suspicions. Now, the first 90% of the show was very, very boring, but the last 5 minutes was so good. You had to see the true nature of the game and characters. You gotta see the psychological snap of the MC, and it all just had my serotonin pumping. The best way I can describe it is as if you take those stereotypical death game animes, take out the death, put in the Squid Game's death plot, and sprinkle psychological thriller on top. At this point, I recommend the show, we'll see where it goes. I give the story and characters a 2 out of 2.5, and the refreshing take and animation a 1.5 out of 2.5, for a total of a 7 out of 10. I'll be watching more of this, but I don't know where it's going to go. I'd say it's a 50-50 on being good or being garbage. Finally, we have Aharon is Indecipherable. This story follows small and cute Rina Aharon as she starts an odd friendship with her classmate, Raido Mitsubushi. <laughs> That's it. That's the synopsis. Basically, if you ask me, it's a worse version of Komi Can't Communicate. The guy MC is so bland, he looks like a background character. And then Aharon can talk, you just can't hear her. So basically just Komi, but a lolly. It did make me laugh though. So if you finish Komi and you want to just watch more of something like it, then I'd watch the show. But I'd finish Komi first. So I give the story a 1.5 out of 2.5. The refreshing take a 1 out of 2.5. The characters a 1.5 out of 2.5. And animation a 1.5 out of 2.5. For a total of a 5.5 out of 10. And that's all the new animes I watched this spring. I hope you enjoyed and let me know what you're watching as well this spring. If you made it this far, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more recommendations, ratings, and hot takes. And I'll see you guys in the next one.